A doubleheader of Monday Night Football for the third week in the last four to end out another week in the NFL. Week seven comes to a close tonight with two games. DRS, we had a couple of early starts in the first two Monday Night Football doubleheaders of this season. It's a little bit later of a start tonight. A regularly scheduled game that begins at around 8.15 p.m. Eastern time in Tampa between the Buccaneers and the Ravens in one out in the desert in Arizona that will kick a little bit after 9 p.m. Eastern. Let's start with that first one between the Buccaneers and the Ravens. In this matchup, Baltimore on a four-game win streak after a winless 0-2 start is a three-and-a-half point road favorite against the Bucks. Total 49 and a half. Donnie, what are your early thoughts for this game to kick off the doubleheader of Monday Night Football? A lot of respect for the Baltimore Ravens going on the road in favor by three and a half points, so we'll start there. But I do think we're finally starting to kick in what makes the Ravens such a dominant team and why I think they have a legitimate chance to win the AFC Championship and head to a Super Bowl. Yes, they blew the game against Vegas to drop the 0-2, 26-23, to unacceptable. Beat the Dallas Cowboys, 28-25, don't look at that score. That was a blowout victory. Beat the Buffalo Bills down 35-10, to an absolute boss. Then you saw them come back against Cincinnati in a wild one. But then also, Washington last week, hey, beat a rookie quarterback. Washington looks like they're a pretty good offensive machine, and they beat them by a touchdown. So we'll start right there at this point. For me, the Baltimore Ravens are the better football team. If I think they win, and I do, I'll be willing to lay the three and a half. We'll go into some other things outside of that. But my initial thoughts are, let's move it towards the Ravens. I like the Ravens this year, and no surprise, four straight wins looking for five in a row. Closing number on FanDuel, six and a half. Consensus in the marketplace, seven for a week ago in that Ravens matchup against the Commanders. So in this four-game win streak, either they have covered in all four or they're 3-0-1 oh, against the number. Donnie, the flock has gone over in five of six games this year. We'll talk about the point total in just a moment. But I do want to highlight Tampa, a football team that is – uh, a winning football team at this moment also with a four and two record it is the best record currently in the nfc south and the buccaneers have been an underdog twice this season or three times rather they have won outright in two and in a game where they really coughed up an opportunity in overtime against the falcons they were unable to cover that game but a team as a dog that is now 11 and 5 against the spread with Baker Mayfield as its starting quarterback. Eight of those 11 uh, covers an outright victory. I actually think the Buccaneers keep this game within margin. I think it's close. I think it's a really good one on this Monday night in Tampa. So let's talk the offensive production. Total at 49 and a half as we shared the flock over in five of six games this year. Not many better than the Ravens defending the run. Not anybody worse in the NFL than Baltimore defending the pass. The worst passing defense in the National Football League. Just how many points do we see tonight? Yeah, I think we do get a chance to see that 49 and a half go over. Here's the one thing I'm leery about. If we had a full go... Uh, Tampa Bay team, you say, you know what? They should be able to get after that secondary for the Ravens. But that one key injury, Mike Evans popping up on that injury report with that hamstring and struggling with this week, missing some practices, that can go at any point, which means it's going to be up to Chris Godwin to sort of change the game and not have his counterpart on the other side. I do think that will hurt. Coming in from a Baltimore perspective, they're coming in relatively healthy. And also the reemergence yeah. back in of Mark Andrews, which is such a big part of their double tight end sets along with Isaiah Likely. But if you just continue to use the formula that has gotten here over the past four weeks, let Lamar Jackson spin it about 20, 25 times a game. Let him run about mm-hmm. seven to eight times a game. Give it off to Derrick Henry. Everything opens up in your passing game and your running game, and the entire playbook would be available to you there. That's the way I'm going to operate at this one. I'm not so sure how much that Buccaneers team can slow this football team down. Also, when you look at some of the games that the Bucs played, inexplicable losses to Denver, 26-7. to Yes, you beat the Philadelphia mm-hmm. Eagles, but let's remember the Philadelphia Eagles with no wide receivers in that game to think of heading into their bye week the next week. They got slaughtered and didn't even show up. And I do give them credit because they did beat Detroit Lions on the road. But if you remember, Ben, that's the game where the Lions repeatedly went down the field and just couldn't score touchdowns in the red zone going right. one for seven so there are some opportunities to score some points here and what do we love about baker mayfield also 
He's a big game player, which means if he runs, if, excuse yep. me, if the play's there for him to run, he will do that. But more importantly, if it's double coverage to make a big play, he'll throw it. If it's double coverage to get an interception to turn the tide, he'll do that too. The Saints couldn't get out of their own way for so many times here with Spencer Rattler the past two weeks. We see that final score, 51-27, to 27, with a Spencer Rattler-started game for New Orleans. There's a chance that this game yep. can really get high scoring, and it depends on what Baker Mayfield wants to do. Touchdown passes and interceptions? Yeah, this game goes over. Yeah, and when you look at the Buccaneers secondary, fourth worst in the NFL as yeah. well. Yeah. Should be a big night for both quarterbacks. 253 and a half, the passing yards prop for Baker. Uh, a little bit less than that for Lamar Jackson, 229 and a hook. But we know how efficient and solid he has been, both utilizing his legs and his arm. Derrick Henry, 85 and a half is his passing or rushing yards prop at this mm. moment. A number DRS, he has been over in four consecutive games with at least 92 yards on the ground in all four victories for the Ravens. He has scored in every game this year. He's had multiple rushing scores twice in the last four for the flock. Now, Tampa's not terrible against the run. Top half of the NFL in defending it. They have a very tall task tonight to try to slow down Derrick Henry, who even at the age of 30 has really showed in Baltimore why he is known as the king. Absolutely. And you expect nothing less than greatness because the key to him is it's not, hey, let's say again, save him for the playoffs here. He's a volume running back. The more carries you give him, the stronger he gets and the less, Ben, defensive linemen, linebackers, cornerbacks, and safeties want to tackle him, which is why you see a big man moving that fast. Why does he get a chance to move that fast? People like taking, making business decisions to be able to tackle him and say, you know what? I could get to the other side of the field, but I'm just going to stay out. I don't want to end up being a poster where this guy stiff arms me down. So I do yeah. think this game is going to be weighed just upon how Baltimore does on offense. If they're crisp, as they've been over the past four to five games, Ben, they should have no yeah. problems getting in the high 20s, which means Baker Mayfield is absolutely going to have to respond here and throw a lot of passes that maybe he didn't yeah. want to throw, which is, again, both good and bad for the total. But typically, touchdowns and interceptions means great things for the total. Chris Godwin has been Baker's top target this year. He's got the highest receiving yards prop of yeah. the game, 74 yep. and a half. DRS, you mentioned the hamstring injury and some concern around the status of Mike Evans. He does have a prop still available on FanDuel. Yep. That's a good sign that maybe he is going to play. The nightcap of the doubleheader on Monday up next. Our second Monday night football game of this doubleheader to end out week number seven takes place in the desert, 9 p.m. Eastern time, the scheduled kick between the Cardinals and the Chargers. L.A., a very slight road favorite, laying a point and a half in the desert against the Cards. Total at 44 and a half. The Chargers back off the bye last week. Another win and a cover as a road favorite in Denver. The uh, DRS, when you look at this game between mm -hmm. the Chargers and the Cardinals, what is your first lean? My first lean always is going to be towards the Chargers because I just love a good hardball coach team. You know they're not going yep. to turn the football over. They're going to use that ground game to their advantage. And there's a lot of things that you say, well, what's we going to get Arizona? The young wide receiver has just had a concussion. How effective is he going to be? Is James Conner going to be effective late in the game if they're down a touchdown or more? And also Kyler Murray, let's be more explosive in this passing game. And with your legs here, that makes that offense go. But I look at the lineup here, which is what we're expecting for the Chargers. A lot of guys banged up. Quentin Johnson, doubtful with the ankle injury, didn't practice all week long. You take a look at Lad McConkey, so questionable with the hip injury, only limited practices all week long. You're looking at Joey Bosa, obviously not going to play in this one, and so, so, and yeah. so forth. So even though that this team is banged up coming in, don't you still trust the Chargers a little bit more? And it is showing them respect as being a road favorite at minus one and a half, because why? J.K. Dobbins is going to get that football 15-plus yeah. times tonight. He's going to score a touchdown. He's going to run for five yeah. yards per carry because that's what you do against the Arizona Cardinals defense. Usually I say to myself, and again, entering into the season, Ben, right? Chargers defense, Chargers offense. I want to be involved in every single game because I think the offense for the Cardinals can score points, and I don't think the defense is going yep. to be very good. That 44-and-a-half yep. sticks out because it's not the M.O. for the Chargers to say, hey, we're up 14-7 in the third quarter. Let's open it up and really try to blow this football team away. Jim Harbaugh is going to say, yep. we're up 14-7. Let's make this game 17-7 and really turn the screws yeah. on the Arizona Cardinals. So I do have a slight lean towards the under, but I am looking for the Chargers to win this football game and based on their ground attack to control the clock as well. DRS, it's not a surprise to lean toward the under. Last week, 23-16, yeah. the win for the Chargers in Denver. 
trickles yep. over the total of 35, 36 and a half pregame. It was the first over of the year for L.A. And it barely goes over in a game that did not exceed 40 total points. That is the Bolts recipe. And although some of the playmakers on the outside might be a little bit injured, the offensive line used that early bye week for Los Angeles to get healthier. And the Cardinals are the third worst rushing defense in the NFL, allowing 153 yards per game. Again, all of these trends highlighting why the Chargers actually hold some key advantages tonight and again i lean under 44 and a half like you drs because if la plays the game they want to justin herbert throws it 25 times jk dobbs and dobbins runs it 25 times that's how the chargers want to win 20 to 13 20 to 16 we'll see you later we head out of arizona Mm -hmm. with a four and two record but that's the path and the recipe in the game plan for LA of course Arizona trying not to let that be the case and the Cardinals DRS since the start of last year an underdog in 21 of 23 total games with Jonathan Gannon as the head coach they've been a solid underdog covering team when not much has been expected 11 and 10 against the spread yeah, exactly. And also, if you, by the way, from an Arizona Cardinals perspective here in this game for me, Ben, if they want to stay close, it has to be Kyler Murray. Look at the last football game against Green Bay. They got hammered. Seven carries for 14 yards. The game against San Francisco, which they won, seven carries for 83 yards. They got crushed by Washington. One carry for three yards. You stay close to Detroit. Five carries for 45 yards. You beat the Rams. Five carries for 59 yards. You see the pattern that's shaping up at this point right now. It's going to have to be one based on your starting quarterback, making plays, keeping plays alive, and also being explosive out of the pocket. So maybe the Chargers have to use a spy, which can open up the passing game here. You have a wonderful tight end on the Arizona Cardinals. Can they use him enough in this football game in Trey McBride to say, you know what, seven catches, 60-plus yards in this game, and a touchdown to see what happens? Because the one thing we do know is you're looking at the spread, Ben. You're not getting one that goes, I think they can keep it close in this game. That's why I'll take the points. No, you're betting them to win the football game. The question is, if that football game is to be won, it has to be on the shoulders of your quarterback here for Arizona. Not necessarily the case for Herbert and the Chargers, much more of a team concept and spreading the football around and handing the football off. He has to win this game. Kyler Murray has to be the star tonight if the Cardinals want to win. 2.11.5 is his passing yards prop. Not overly large, but he's been under that in four of six games. Marvin Harrison Jr. exited last week for Arizona in concussion protocol. Props are listed, expected to play tonight. We'll hear from Dr. David Chow, the pro football doc, with some of the field views on sixscore.com for the doubleheader on Monday in our third hour, which comes up next. We'll talk to you after the break, live right here on the early line. Live right here on this Monday morning on the early line on Sports Grid. It is our third and final hour here across the Spiz Grizz Network. He is Donnie Wright's side. I am Ben Stevens. But so much more to dive into a doubleheader of NFL action on this Monday night to end out week number seven in Tampa. It's the Bucks and the Ravens. Then we head out to the desert. 9 p.m. Eastern time kick in Glendale between Arizona, that being the Cardinals, and the L.A. Chargers. So, of course, we need to hear from the people. We'll get the prop perspective for this Monday night. And how about this little treat, the RS? Tomorrow, the opening night of an NBA Mm. regular season. We'll take an early look at the Tuesday night doubleheader to kick off the campaign in the association in just a little bit as well. A new season on the brink for us here. And also, we love the NBA because it's night to night. It's a lot of good fun stuff. It's just a shame that nobody pays attention to it except Kevin Walsh until after January the 1st. But we'll get through it. We'll have some fun. We'll do it. Was that necessary? Like that that setup? Was that necessary? (laughs) I had, I had to get the shot. And look, if I'm going to be a commissioner, I got to have stands out here, yeah. Ben, that I can campaign yeah. on. That's one of my campaigns here. We don't start the NBA yeah. to at least like Christmas Day is the perfect jump off point to the NBA. And then the NFL yeah. goes, no, it's our day again. So maybe Boxing Day, I think they call it, <laughs> December 26th. Maybe that's the perfect day for the NBA to start. How about that? You ever hear? You ever celebrate like Boxing holiday? Day? You ever go to the Boxing Day? System? I think it's, U- yeah. I want to say it's UK. Is U- UK do, who does Boxing Day? Somebody Yeah, does no, it. you're right. And I yeah. mean, 
I don't in, even think they box. The UK, is it just they like you get Christmas. boxes, or do you actually go out in the streets and just like, you know what? Let's get a fair one out here in these streets. You know what I mean? Now that would be a holiday. Imagine, imagine Boxing Day where you don't know if you leave your house, you got to square up oh, multiple times yeah. legally oh, in public. That's a good one. Just, That's a good day. Out there like a little razzmatazz every time. Oh you head man, out to the Joe street. Lisi, where would he go Listen. on Boxing Day? We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> Trying to find the guys who stole his car. Anyway. <laughs> Damn, kids. Oh, that was fun. That was, yeah. He doesn't think they're kids. Anyway, we could talk about that for the entirety of this third hour if we needed to. Let's hear from the people, though, as we get ready for this Monday night doubleheader to end out week seven of the NFL season. First up in Tampa, the Bucks, a three and a half point home dog against a Ravens team on a four game win streak. Then out to the desert, the Cardinals and the Chargers, just a short one and a half point spread in favor of the Bolts. We had to ask the people, DRS, two leg money line parlay who wins them both that was the question in fade the public so drs you were not here on friday but the fade the public question to the people was about major league baseball with a uh, double header who would win game five between the dodgers and the mets and game four between the yanks and the guardians oh. most of the public overwhelmingly so more than 50 saying dodgers Yankees the Yankees held up their end of the bargain of course the Dodgers did not beat the Mets at City Field forcing a game six so the public overall this year six and seven can they get back to 500 with a two-leg money line parlay on Monday Night Football they're going chalk Ravens Chargers two road favorites tonight 48 percent of the vote DRS you fade in the public Look, no, I'm not. I actually went with the public, and it sounds crazy to do this, but we're not talking about two games, Ben, like, hey, seven and a half point favorites each, where it's like, yes, the Ravens and the Chargers will win. We're also taking a look at two ball clubs that the public is betting on, and so is myself, being on the road here, expected to win these road games here, being the Ravens and the Chargers. Plus 185 is a decent price, but this one's a little bit tougher than usual because in baseball, like, hey, it's minus 170, minus 160, minus 150. You got to decide an advantage. You're still getting plus money here because why is said one and a half point line three and a half point line keeps it close here but i can see where the public and myself went with the ravens and the chargers i just think both of these teams are the better football teams but it's the nfl boy it's hard to win games on the road and these teams aren't decided favorites and easily either one of these road games here so drs i'm slightly fading the public i actually selected the bucks and the chargers mm. i think tampa's got mm. something tonight they've been a great ah. underdog with baker mayfield three and a half point spread even if the buccaneers do not win outright i do believe they can cover that number but you are right these are not monumental spreads i'm not saying the bucks plus six and a yeah. half because i think they can keep this game to within four or six it is just three and a half if you like the Cardinals to win outright, you're not really getting much value from a spread perspective. You can just look at that money line. And again, Arizona, a good underdog in their time with Jonathan Gannon as well. 11 and 10 ATS. So here we are in these two spots where the RS, the public, is trying to pick both of those money line winners. If Baltimore wins, as you anticipate and even mm -hmm. covers, that'd be five straight wins for the flock and more than likely if they do cover we'll give them the benefit we'll say they have covered in all five or at least they have not covered in any of the five wins if you want to say they closed as a touchdown favorite against washington and did end up pushing that game in a touchdown victory but that would still to me look really really solid for the Ravens and Donnie although Kansas City is the last undefeated team in the National Football League you would almost have to think that Baltimore is right there on the same tier that we might see maybe not a Super Bowl rematch as we did yesterday between the Chiefs and the Niners but an AFC championship game rematch more than likely at the end of this season. No, no doubt about it, because we're talking about four straight wins here after the first two losses of the season. Cowboys, Bills, Bengals, and Commanders handle your business. You go on the road tonight as a slight favorite of the Buccaneers and beat them, Ben. Guess what? You then go on the road against the Browns, the lowly Browns, who even knows who's coming out for that football game next. Then you take a look at the Broncos, who are quality, but you got them at home. The Bengals, we'll see where they're at, but you also have them at home, and you already beat them once. So you theoretically could go, all right, four-game streak turns into five, six, seven, and eight 
and away you go. I'm interested to see what we get out of the Ravens tonight, but also the expectations for me aren't ex- aren't saying, hey, I don't know if they can do well on offense. No, they've been really good on offense. Stick to the same formula that brought you here in those four games, and I think the Ravens will be fine. I'm very yeah. excited, as it was before the season, for the Ravens. A little bit down after the 0-2, but they righted that ship quickly by doing the principles that work for that team. Not a ton of arm usage for Lamar Jackson. He can be special with 25 passes or less. He can be special on the ground. Same mm-hmm. thing with Derrick Henry. And it looks like some of these young kids at wide receiver can step up there, including Zay Flowers. And boy, if Mark Andrews can get back to being a top five tight end in football, that's what we're looking forward to for the Ravens. Lamar Jackson thrown for more than 320 last week against the Commanders on only 26 attempts. Impressive. We showed you his passing yards prop for tonight. 229 and a half. It's a number Lamar has gone over in four of six games. And he's looked pretty consistent and efficient in doing that. Baltimore DRS minus 250. The favorites to win the AFC North. The Steelers, though, also five and two. Just saw the playoff prices go up on the FanDuel Sportsbook. The Bengals, yeah. despite that 0 and 3 start, now favored at minus 120. To see the postseason, again, the AFC North outside of Cleveland should be competitive here in the second half. Yeah, bad. Look, there's a lot of bad football teams mixed in, but also a lot of bad record slash decent talented football teams that can make a run. Yeah. That's the fun part about it. It used to be you had the, you know, the has or the wannabes and the teams that just weren't going to be able to make it in and then the really good football teams. But now you're seeing. Look, 0-3 start, you can never recover from that. Now you're still basically a favorite to make the playoffs after an 0-3 start. It just tells you the talent that Cincinnati has, if they can get it together. I'm still skeptical. What a big game next week on the Bengals' schedule going up against the Philadelphia Eagles. That could be a make-or-break game for them once again here. So good times. Every game's meaningful. Who would have thought it? DRS, we talked about it in the AFC that to start this year, we expected this conference to be highly competitive. You might need 10 or 11 wins, even a sniff a wild card berth. Half of the Mm -hmm. conference now that most have finished week seven have a winning record. But of that half eight teams, it includes teams like the Colts above 500, the Broncos at four and three, and these Chargers who have a winning record and trying to stay above 500 with a win tonight against the Cardinals in Arizona. A prop perspective on this Monday for a double header of NFL action to end out week number seven. We call on the jack of all trades in his sports grids, Tom Vecchio. Tom, as always, thank you for being here. How was your NFL Sunday? Was it prolific with the props? It was. It was a good day from the prop perspective. My fantasy teams are absolutely terrible. Uh, we have two uh, Monday night games. You know, normally I like to say, let's get in a mix tonight. But I think the one doing the most mixing tonight will be a baker as usual. Mm. Oh, I like Ooh, so that. Again, mixer. that's a second consecutive appearance yeah. at Avecchio dropping a bar. The Donnie Wright side wishes he could spit a B over. Vecchio, I love Mm. the way you're bringing the fire to start off these segments. All right, let's start with the first of two Monday night football games, a matchup of two teams at four and two each. In Tampa, the Buccaneers play host to the Ravens. Baltimore, Tom, on a four-game win streak and a a three-and-a-half point road favorite. High total, 49-and-a-half. Should be a really good game tonight between the Bucs and the Flock. How do you see it playing out? What are the numbers telling you? Uh, This is by far the more interesting game of the two tonight. You know, we have two teams that I'm going to say are moving the ball on offense, and ultimately I think they're struggling on defense. We look to the Ravens, and they've absolutely been trending up for the majority of the season after the first few weeks. But, you know, last week they gave up some points to the Commanders. The week before, they're giving up points and yards to the Bengals. I think we're going to see some points tonight. Like, that's the main thing that I'm focusing in on. We're going to see the ball move. We're going to see some players hit overs on props. We're going to see some scoring. So, obviously, I want everything to correlate that. I do think we're going to be in for a far more exciting game compared to the later one. So, start with points here. Start with some yards here. Some players that have high involvement in offenses that we'll get to, and I think they're going to be scoring. I think it can go a number of different ways. I think this game has the juice that we're looking for tonight. Let's get some juice out of the quarterback position here, Tom, because we do have two guys that like to put up some numbers. That's Baker Mayfield and Lamar Jackson. Passing props, 253.5 for Baker, 231.5 for Lamar. If you're looking at touchdown props, both guys listed at 1.5, minus 102 juice for Baker Mayfield, plus 102 for Lamar Jackson. How about the quarterbacks tonight, Tom? 
I, you know, going to overs on Lamar is always tough because he could have one, run one in, Derrick Henry has two, whatever it might be. And ultimately, if I think the Ravens are going to be slightly out ahead, as we've seen the Bucks defense kind of struggle. I mean, they gave up 27 points to a rookie quarterback in Spencer Rattler. If, they're, if the Ravens can move the ball effectively, I think we're going to see the Bucks in the spot where they need to pass the ball. So I have far more interest when it comes to Baker props. And ultimately, Baker is like a player in my mind that's going to go down swinging. He may have some interceptions, but he could have three touchdowns, two interceptions, and 300 yards so sure. i actually like baker a few like a little bit more when it comes to his passing yards his passing touchdowns um and that's kind of where i'm leading things i do have some interest when it comes to the ravens uh skill players position players though and tom i think there's a lot of thought into that that both quarterbacks could throw for a ton but of course that then benefits the guys catching the actual footballs tonight because we have two of the four worst passing defenses through six weeks in the NFL. The Bucks, the fourth worst passing defense. Baltimore, the best rushing defense, but the worst passing defense, giving up nearly 25 points per game as well this year. But let's start with the Ravens. Lamar Jackson's new top target might be the second-year pro Zay Flowers. More than 100 yards in each of the last two weeks for the flock. Is that where you start your for- focus for this Baltimore offense tonight? It has to be, and as I always say, players that are this involved in an offense are going to score touchdowns. And we have Zay Flowers, who hasn't scored a touchdown since week two, sitting at plus 155. So I like him for a touchdown. I like him for over 16 and a half yards. He leads the team in nearly every meaningful category outside of red zone target share. He has a 28.4% target share. The next highest on the players, Rashad Bateman, at 15.4%. We're seeing 12 and nine targets over the last two weeks, over 100 yards in each of the last two weeks, like you said. And he's not scoring. I said this about Olave before. I'll say this time and time again about basically any player that is a top target option on a team, and they're simply not scoring. That's game script sometimes. We saw him have over 100 yards in the first half last week, and he didn't end up scoring. That happens. I will buy into Zay Flowers at plus 155 in a game where we could see 60 points tonight. If we're looking from a running back perspective here, if you're from the Ravens, obviously it's Derrick Henry. 85 and a half yards, it's a high number. He's going to get the football. But uh, the question comes from me, Tom, more from a Tampa Bay side of things. You have Rashad White coming back into the equation. Bucky Irvin has looked good, and also the emergence of Sean Tucker. How would you play the ground game here, at least the running backs, from Tampa Bay? You have to pick your spot, and you have to be like committed to that spot because not all three of them are going to have big games, right? That, that's just simply what it comes down to. We're not going to see all of them hit their overs on pro- – I mean – Unless the game has 70 or 80 points, the only that's like players are not all going to hit their overs. Personally, yeah. I think Bucky Irving is the best of the bunch. Uh, White, he's had his struggles. He's coming back from injury. Sean Tucker, I think, is the wild card because if Tucker has a big game, that means Rashad White is doing absolutely nothing. So I think you have to pick your spot. And for me, it's going to be Bucky Irving combined rushing plus receiving. Both of the rookie running backs put up a ton of numbers last week Mm. against New Orleans. Vecchio will continue to look at that first game, but let's go to the second game now for just a moment. You thought more scoring for the opening game of the night in Tampa. Maybe not as exciting for the second game starting at 9 p.m. Eastern time out in the desert. It's the Cardinals hosting the Chargers. L.A. a slight road favorite, total at 44 and a half. Lowest total of the year for the Cards might be the highest total of the season for L.A. What do you expect in this game out in the desert? I'm expecting a lack of scoring, and, you know, we have some good def- good defense on the Chargers side of things, and ultimately, these teams don't know how to sustain drives. The, the Chargers are dead last in the league with 32.7 seconds per play, and both the Chargers and the Cardinals are in the bottom seven of the league when it comes to plays per game. They're not moving the ball. We know what the Chargers are doing this season, right? This has been their plan the entire offseason. They trade away Keenan Allen. They trade away Mike Williams. They're going to run the ball this season, and it means Herbert is not putting up these prolific numbers that we saw from him in years past, and we have seen the Cardinals offense struggle at times yes they're getting getting Marvin Harrison Jr. back so I expect a some amount of passing from the Cardinals simply because they have to but we have good defense on the Chargers side of things so if these teams can't sustain play us uh, can't sustain drives we're not going to see a whole lot of scoring we're going to see a slow grinded out game where they're milking the clock I expect the Chargers to have the slight edge and a lack of excitement overall Kyler Murray, Justin Herbert, the two starting quarterbacks in this matchup. 212.5 is the passing prop for Kyler Murray. 196.5 for Justin Herbert. Touchdown props, you're getting some pretty good numbers. Both of these quarterbacks, Tom, over 1.5. But look at these prices. Both at plus 144 to throw two touchdowns or more. How do we approach the quarterback market tonight in game number two? You know, frankly, I think it's kind of the same situation where 
I think Murray would go down swinging. I don't think they'll run the ball too much with Connor if they fall too too far behind. He has the big playability with Marvin Harrison Jr. back. So I kind of like him over one and a half touchdowns. I think that's certainly viable tonight. You know, frankly, from a Herbert perspective, I like him under 18 and a half completions. Uh, he's been over this number mm. one time this season, and that was last week. And I think that's just kind of a game script thing. They got so far out of head, so far out ahead against Denver that they were kind of moving the ball with ease. It's just not a spot, and it's just not their offensive play calling. They have a, a pass play percentage that is under 50%. They're not passing at a high volume this season. So I like Herbert under 18 and a half. Again, you want to take Murray over yards just because you think they'll be playing from behind. I think that's totally fine tonight. 27 and a half the attempts prop for Justin Herbert a number he has been over uh, under excuse me in four of five games this year I believe if I did my math correctly in the first four years of Herbert's career in Los Angeles he was under 30 attempts four times in four years in total it is a complete change of game script so does that mean we look at J.K. Dobbins as we round out your top props for this Monday Mm. night doubleheader it, it certainly does, and ultimately, I think Dobbins will have a big role as he had. But again, under 17 and a half attempts, he's been over this mark one time, and that was last week when they were up 23 to nothing versus Denver. And again, this this circles yeah. back to what I said: they are dead last in the league when it comes to seconds per play, and they do not have a lot of plays per game. Both teams are in the bottom seven of the league, so he can be effective. He's rushing for 90 plus yards, 100 plus yards in the first two weeks of the season. But they're not running the ball; they're not running a lot of plays per game. So he breaks off these big runs, and then they just slow it down, and milk the clock. Tom Vecchio, as always, we appreciate the time. Did we get the Kate Otten, by the way? Did you mention Kate, Kate Otten? Hey. Yeah, Kate Otten's the guy. We we have the the Ravens allowed uh, have allowed 436 receiving yards to tight ends. That's the second most in the league. So it kind of circles back to again what I said. Baker's going to throw the ball just because the Ravens are giving up passing yards. They may be playing yeah. from behind. I think Evans and Godwin are totally fine tonight, but I like that Otten number at over 36 and a half. Mm. Uh, under the number last week against New Orleans, over in three straight prior. Vecchio, as always, the prop respect is beautiful. We'll see you later on the Sports Grid Network. More on the early line next. When there's a doubleheader of Monday Night Football, we need to make it a triple. A triple option live right here on this Monday on the early line on Sports Grid. DRS, before we dive into our picks for mm. both games on this Monday night, Does it ever bum you out that based on your schedule, having to work late night Monday and Thursday to make sure the people have every in-game live betting opportunity for those marquee matchups, that you're no longer a part of the tummy, the pick six, and instead you Uh. just have to give out picks at a triple option? I feel the pressure is off at that point. And like, it's a little bit more yeah. like I'm in like the shade, if that makes some sense, where people have to now yeah. seek me out as opposed to say like, hey, I was expecting to yeah. get those six picks on Saturday. So you know what? We'll give them out to the people. We'll let them eat all right. weekend long. So I, I don't mind it. I don't mind. Listen, I, I don't like to toot my own horn because I miss plenty more than I make, but I did go five for six in my pick six. Wow. This weekend. The only one that missed was James Daniels. You lose? Had it over over 241 and a half yeah, passing yeah. Get yards your money back but he was refunded fan yeah. come on refund it come mariota on. threw for more than 200 daniels i don't know how many he ended up, up with i think he was two for two for six so it should have been should have been something anyway yeah. uh, i'm gonna start I'm gonna, by the way ben i'm gonna start please. a let's start a book together here can we get bonded and licensed here where we can say all right if my starting quarterback goes yeah. down you automatically get the backup i mean come on that's for the people man it really is listen you have dealt a yeah. lot with sports book operators to make sure that yeah, you are uh, live and legal I am in whatever real. state you need to be placing wagers you would almost i love the brand new sports book right great sponsor of this show i thought that should have put you to the front of the line that's the only thing i'll say Six six pictures, debit cards, licenses, you know, written notes from my parents. Finally got it worked. It worked. Right. We're back in, though. Hmm? All they needed to do was watch one episode of the early line, and they would have seen that Donnie Wright's side is for real. real. All right, let's get ready. Very real. Let's get ready for the triple option here on this Monday. Our favorite side, total, and prop from either of the two games on this Monday to end out week seven. DRS, begin with your favorite side. We might be going head-to-head tonight, my friend. Yeah, I'm going to go three and a half. I'm going to lay that three and a half game number one, which I do think, again, is the game of the night, the Baltimore Ravens and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, AFC versus NFC. But as we always say, typically it's defense travels, we like to say, right? No, running games travel in the NFL. Lamar Jackson playing as good, every bit as good as his MVP seasons right now. Finally, a true superstar running back in Derrick Henry, who is healthy and welcoming the volume change from weeks one to week two, the past four weeks here. He is getting as many touches as he needs and as many touchdowns 
rebounds as he can score. Zay Flowers stepping up here. Mark Andrews looks like he's getting better from that injury that he had, which was devastating last year. I'm going to take the Baltimore Ravens tonight. Simple, Ben, right? If I think they're going to win the game, I think they're going to win by more than three and a half. I'm going with the Ravens. So, DRS, I like that look because Baltimore, for instance, has been playing so well this year. They've won four straight. They've covered perhaps in three or four of these four straight wins. But I'm going with the home team tonight catching points, that being the Buccaneers. I think the Bucs, as an underdog, a spot I always want to look at. 11-5 and five against the spread with Baker Mayfield as the starting quarterback since the start of last season. Two and one, both straight up and against the number in three games as a dog this year. Winning outright in their first two and coughing up what would have been a golden opportunity before losing in overtime to the Falcons as a dog on a short week Thursday night football game. So a little bit in direct competition here tonight, DRS. I'm going to take Tampa getting three and a half points. One of us will win. The other will not. Just how it's going to play out. I wonder if your co-hosts on NFL Football In-Game Live Game Day will be with you lockstep tonight. I don't know if they will because I don't know if they're going to want to hear me for, what, four straight hours, four and a half hours of football tonight while I tell them how bad their opinions are, particularly at the quarterback position. Leave it. Look, smartest man in the room is the only wide receiver in the room. Remember that. Always remember that. All right. Favorite total of the night is where, DRS? Mm Over 49 and a half. Let's keep it with the Ravens and Buccaneers. What do you like about this? The Ravens offense has been spectacular. They'll be able to move the football against Tampa Bay, but Baker Mayfield is like the ultimate competitor, which you know if they're down. He's going to throw them right back into that football game. Hopefully, look, if you're looking for a total of that 49 and a half to get there, you got to have Mike Evans healthy. You got to have him engage us because Godwin on one side and Evans on the other. That can move the football against this Ravens secondary as long as they're both there. If Evans checks out earlier, it's apparent that he's not healthy. That means that coverage yeah. rolls over to Godwin. It makes it harder to move the football. But also, I do think you need a balanced attack out of the Buccaneers, which you can get it. We just brought it up. They have three legitimate running backs that they can go to here and a couple of really good passing options out of the back there. If Baker Mayfield is on it tonight, let me see 250-plus passing yards. Let me see two touchdowns. Yeah. Let me see two interceptions tonight, which would be so Baker Mayfield. We're going to get over that total. I just see points. Two offenses that can get hot. Yeah. Two offenses that won't be saying like, hey, let's slow down the tempo here. Give me over 49 and a half in game number one. Yeah, DRS, I kind of agree with you as well. We've got two offenses that can be exposed through the air. The Ravens really good defending the run, but you would think that Baker and the Bucks will be throwing it a ton tonight. Two defenses allowing more than 23 points per game each. The Ravens nearly 25 points per game. My favorite total is the second game of the night under 44 and a half. The mm. Chargers have been under in four of five. This is the highest total they have seen this year. The Cardinals, this is the lowest total they have seen of the season. We know how the Chargers want to do things. They're a road favorite in the desert. They're going to slow down the game. They're going to try to grind it out with the running game. Give me under 44 and a half. So DRS for the run game for the Bolts. That's where you look for your favorite prop run game for the bolts jk dobbins one thing we do know is you're banged up at wide receiver and that that head coach loves to get mean and nasty on that front line which means fullbacks with their hand in the dirt and running backs pounding the football inside the five yard line jk dobbins anytime touchdown vandal sportsbook minus 135 touchdown cha-ching I like that look, Donnie, so, so much. I agree with what Vecchio was saying from the under of the attempts prop, but I think J.K. Dobbins has a big night. Oh, by the way, again, systematically, this favors the Chargers. Arizona's the third worst rushing defense in the NFL. You would think yeah. matchup advantage in favor of the Chargers. I go to Zay Flowers, over 60 and a half receiving yards. Vecchio laid it out. He's got 48 targets this year. He's had more than 110 receiving yards in each of the past two games. He's the only Ravens receiver tight end or otherwise with more than 27 targets this season and he's got 48 drs enjoy nfl football in game live game day enjoy the money line i'll talk to you on thursday my friend i'll miss you have a good week more on the early line on the other side of the room